Camping and Adventures. I believe this is episode 20. And we may as well do the review on the uh, MN Triton. So my car, you've seen in the videos, I've done some uh, few little things like the uh, awning and tyres and that kind of thing. But we're going to go into a full overview of the car, what I've done to it. And uh, it's going to be like a first part of a mini-series. So things to look out for, cons and pros of the vehicle. Um, cons and pros of forward driving with the vehicle, some recalls to look out for, and just some uh, general what I've done to this vehicle to sort of give you an idea of um, what I think's best for these cars. All right, so the engine bay, 2.5 litre turbo diesel. Things I've only done to it is uh, the dual battery system, and I've also put an EGR block on it, which is this little guy here. So it just stops some circulation from happening inside uh, the engine. But beyond that, it's pretty factory. There's not much done in the air. Obviously, I've wired up the whole thing myself. Got the Red Arc um, battery isolator and um, the HIDs. But beyond that, it's um, it's pretty standard affair in here. I want to keep it that way um, because I don't really need any more power from this. But um, but yeah, just keeps things reliable, and you know that's obviously what you want. Obviously, when you're out in the bush. But, um, but yeah, just your dual battery setup and uh, obviously an EGR block, which is. Um, things I highly recommend. It's not exactly legal, but um, yeah, definitely highly recommended. So it stops all the, uh, the soot going back in the motor, clocking these up and causing uh, more dramas down the track anyway. All right, so uh, this is the inside of my Triton. Um, it's pretty standard in here, but um, I'll just go through it quickly. So we've got the double din head unit. So this is mainly because the standard uh, head unit I bought when I bought this car didn't have Bluetooth, so I um, replaced that straight away. It's got navigation, all that kind of thing in there as well. But, um, but yeah, that was one of the first things to replace because uh, yeah, there's nothing worse than having a pretty um, average stereo. Uh, pretty cool little tip here is these um, knobs here are actually from a Mazda 3. So you can actually buy them off eBay. They're about eight bucks. So if you've got a try and you want to um, get rid of the uh, ugly plastic knobs that come from the factory, you can uh, take, take them out, put these on, and uh, they're replaced straight away. So as you see here, I've got my boost gauge and uh, my voltage gauge. So um, this boost obviously to check on the turbo and obviously voltage for the dual battery system and that I mean that's really about it there's um, an EDS which is um, obviously recording of or monitoring um, you know fuel and water and all that kind of thing on there so I use that um, every day it just sits on the dash there cool feature of this um, because of the Triton so to give you an idea uh, the Triton's had a recall uh, I think it was 2012 or 2011. So they had an over, um, overheating problem. So what happened is the, um, the motor would overheat and because obviously the standard um, temperature gauges in cars aren't exactly that crash hot, uh, people weren't seeing the overheating and yeah, obviously they were blowing engines. Now Mitsubishi obviously um, replaced the motor for free obviously because it's part of the recall so that's fine. I haven't had problems personally with this car, but um, you know I've been on the um, Triton forums and that kind of thing, and you know some people have had problems, and you know I've had motor replaced and all the rest of it. So I bought the EDS purely because it keeps um, check of the uh, average kilometers, which is good for um, towing when I'm towing the camper, and also the uh, what temperature the motor runs at. So it's um, a good good uh, gauge of you know sussing that out. Um, future things for uh, the interior, I'm going to get an EGR gauge um, just for again for towing. And that's that's really about it. There's nothing else. I'm probably uh, you know thinking of um, putting the uh, roof mounted uh, console in here as well, so I can put a two way in there. Because at the moment I just run with the uh, the handheld two ways. So that's going to be uh, I think the next mod in here. But um, everything else in here is pretty standard. Um, doubled in heading, you know, new knobs. Uh, obviously, um, you know your two your two gauges down there, your EDS, and um, that's really about it. So um, things I can safely say that any uh, MN Triton owner would say the seats are pretty average um, the driver's seat is very flat and you sort of sit on it you don't sort of sit in it in it um, so yeah if you're, if you're looking at this car do a decent trip in it you know you can um, uh, there is a fix it for it which is a, a space that sits um, on the uh, seat bolt and it raises the bottom up so you sort of sit in it like a recline position so apparently that fixes it. I haven't done it to mine yet because I haven't had a real big problem with this seat yet. Um, some long trips, yeah, you can get a little bit, um, you know, a little bit uncomfortable. But beyond that, um, yeah, I haven't had any real dramas with the uh, with the seats and that kind of thing. So, look, meh, seats. Probably not going to do anything with them until I find it, uh, you know, really starts annoying me. 
Uh, the only other problem I had with this car was a um, suction control valve, which is a little part of the fuel management system on a direct injection diesel. Um, all of them have it, so suction control valve is just throwing a code. Um, the EDS, which is a great little kit, um, I just got for 89 bucks. Uh, can't remember where from, but um, but yeah, that um, saved me a lot of money because I could wipe the code, get it to Mitsubishi, they replaced the suction control valve, and all was fixed. So that's the only problem I've actually had with the car, and it didn't cost me anything. So uh, also the, um, the the clutch I had to replace because um, it just wasn't uh, up to the duties of towing my camper van on the uh, the beach. So, um, so I replaced the, the clutch with a heavy duty Xeti clutch. Um, can handle a little bit more power, but um, not that I'm chasing power. But yeah, just um, yeah, just nice to have when you're on the beach and um, you know when you're towing something, it does make a big big difference. So, uh, so yeah, that's the interior of the Trident. So, um, the th things obviously uh, will change in here is obviously the roof mounted console, and um, and that's about it. So it's uh, you know it's quite a nice place to be in here. Okay, so this is the rear of the car. So we've got my roof mounted lights up here. Now these are purely for um, when I'm camping, so what they can do is essentially light up a very big area. Um, now they're on a switch actually inside the, um, the back of the car. So if you look inside the back of the car here, switch is here, click them on, click them off. Uh, it also runs the awning light, so if you've seen in my um, awning video, the actual switches run off the same, um, same button here. All right, so things on the Trident that I do and don't like. So I like the uh, I like the economy of this car. It actually is very very good on fuel. Um, I also like the fact that uh, it's got a very very long tray. So um, my double swag fits in here in the tray, no dramas at all. As you've probably seen a couple of my videos, it fits in there nice and easy. Um, it is it is a reasonably good car to drive. Like to be honest, like to be brutally honest with you, it is a pretty normal car to drive. There's no real um, truck likeness. It, it's 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 just a car. Like there's no yeah, it's a little bit noisy. Um, the the tyres are a bit noisy, but that's probably my fault. I put big, you know, thirty twos on it, so with a fairly aggressive, uh, you know, tread pattern on it. So I, I think, really, in the grand scheme of things, it's actually quite nice to drive. It's quite smooth. It's quite soft. The um, suspension is a little bit soft, which is also a downside because it's quite bouncy. Um, but in, in in the grand scheme of things, it's actually quite a nice car to drive. Um, things that I'd change or things that are going to change I am going to put a lift kit on it now there is caution here now if you have an MN Triton which is obviously I've got or a 2013 MN Triton if you lift the car more than um, an inch it can cause dramas with the um, the drivetrain so the uh, well the drive line I should say the the way it gets well the way it works is uh, it's a two piece hub shaft so it bent, or the, way, the angle it gets um, gets on when you actually lift it um, can cause a bit of like a shutter issue when you're taking off. So when, you, when you're taking off from, you know, first gear, um, when you're driving along, there's no issues with it. I've driven cars with the issue and it, it's not all cars. Like it doesn't happen to every single Triton. So some get it, some don't. So I'm gonna, now I'm still gonna get a lift on it um, because I, I just noticed the rear end sagging a little bit. It's almost got 70,000 Ks on it now, so the rear end sagging a little bit. And you know, I, I put some weight in this thing as well, so you know, all my, my camping gear, all that kind of stuff. So, um, so yeah, two inch lifts on the cards. Um, look, I've put, I put the under panel protection. That's something you got to do. The uh, the standard under, under panel protection is so it's like tin foil. It's so thin. So, um, so yeah, recommend do that because uh, yeah, you. you if you, as soon as you hit a rock with the standard stuff, you're just gonna, you know, it's gonna bash stuff. So um, yeah, definitely do that. Um, other things I'm probably gonna do. I'm looking, I'm looking at a couple of um, options of getting an ECU reflash or potentially a, um, a unit ship. Now this isn't to increase power; it's actually increase um, torque. So I just want to get a little bit more torque when I'm towing because when you are towing with these things, they do struggle a little bit. Nothing too bad, but they. they you know, they don't have massive amounts of grunt when you're uh, when you're towing, so and that's something I'm definitely going to look at uh, in, in in the future. But obviously, the next thing on the cards for this is a two-inch lift kit because I mean I've pretty much done everything else. All the interiors kitted out. I've got the screen. I've got the um, the gauges. I've got the boost and um, dual battery system under the bonnet. I've got the lights on the back. I've got the roof rack. I've got the spotties. I've got the awning. 
I've got the slide out um, fridge slide, which obviously takes my 50 litre Waco. Um, and you know, like there, there's not much other things that I really need for this car to um, to go touring. I mean, I could I could take this thing around Australia, and there'd be no dramas. Like as long as as long as I maintained it and all the rest of it, service, all that kind of stuff, um, there'd be no dramas. I could honestly drive this, you know, around Australia. I don't think I'd have, you know, run into too many dramas because the car is pretty well run in now, and anything that goes wrong with this probably is going to be, you know, older parts. So. That side of things, but yeah, I'm quite confident taking this car um, anywhere I go as well. I just go on these trips and think nothing of it because I know the car will get there. Um, and obviously with regular servicing and that kind of thing, there'll be no dramas at all. Um, another thing to look out for is when, you, when you're buying these used, because obviously it's a used car now, when you're buying these used, check the, um, the gear shift action. The synchros can be a bit of a bit iffy. So it um, just means that the gearbox is going to need new synchros so um so fairly easy to do is take a Mitsubishi there is a there's a recall on it so um that sort of thing's easy enough to do but um but yeah just check that when you're buying one second hand another thing to check when second hand is uh rust in the chassis rails obviously that's a pretty standard one for most four drives but um but do check it anyway because you know it's every car is bad for it um check what um normal service history and that side of things but check underneath uh, where the because um, the body's on like a curvature so it curves and where that curve point is there's actually um, the joining of the chassis rail and that's actually the weakest spot so check there and see if you can find any cracks so if, if the chassis is going to crack or they've overweighted the vehicle when they're towing or whatever um, that's where you're obviously going to get the cracks so it'll be a hairline crack but have a look for it because um, if you've got that and you buy one second hand with that the car's bugged, so um, you're not going to get too far with them. Um, look, I, I've driven, uh, I've driven Hiluxes, I've driven Rangers, I've driven D Maxes, I've driven 76 series, I've driven 79 series. Um, there's not too many four-wheel drives I've actually um, that I haven't driven. Uh, mostly the, um, the Land Cruiser Defenders. I haven't really driven many of those, um, but that's that might be my next option as a four-wheel drive. I'm, I'm looking into those. So. Um, Oh, and Jeep, I haven't driven, driven too many uh, Jeep Wranglers, so, um, so yeah, that sort of things as well. But, honest, honestly, I can say, this car, compared to the rest, um, yes, it's cheaper, yes, it's built out of cheaper parts, so, <clears throat> like, the interior um, might be a little bit like lower spec compared to a Ranger, which is fine, you're not paying $70,000 for a wild truck or whatever you're buying. Um, but if, you, if you're after a car that's actually going to do the job and do it reliable and not have too many issues and all the rest of it, then I see no reason why you wouldn't look at the Triton. Um, yes, it's a bit more utilitarian than the rest, but it's also cheaper than the rest, and that's more money you can spend on camping gear. So, um, you know, it's sort of, sort of, don't write it off just because it's a Mitsubishi, because, I mean, I've, I've driven this car for, now 35,000 k's and they are 35,000 hard k's like probably 15 of those thousand k's has probably been off-road so if anyone can put this car through a test I mean I have put this car through a test like um, there's people obviously that probably found crazy amount of uh, you know off-roading I've done in this you know in standard specs so um, so yeah it's uh, yeah I definitely think I'm experienced enough and have the knowledge of this car considering I've had it for um, a year and a half now that I can give a pretty honest review on this car as I said this is part of a mini series so I'm gonna when I get the uh, suspension lift I'll do a video on that um, when I obviously get the DP chip obviously if that goes down the track or the unit chip or whatever um, I'll do a uh, video on that obviously so yeah it's, it's gonna be a bit of a mini series so have a look out for them um, it's also going to be the start of my um, Reviews, I'll call it because I still haven't figured out a name for it. My um, reviews on cars. So I'm going to, uh, as soon as I go down to Perth next, I'm going to do a review on my brother's 76 series. Um, that's if that's decked out to the nines. Um, I've got a Land Rover um, Defender that uh, Chap and Geraldton wants me to look at and do a review on. So I'll spend a bit of time doing that. Um, so there's plenty more of these videos coming. So if you're in WA, hit me a line and um, we can certainly, uh, you know meet up and do a bit of a quick you know a video on the on the vehicle and the rest of it 
um, get yourself on YouTube and all the rest of it, which is pretty cool. But uh, I think that's a, I think that's a wrap. So here's a, another episode by Four by Four Camping Adventures. Um, thanks for watching. I mean the the feedback I get is absolutely fantastic. Please, as always, subscribe. Uh, we're almost at 200 subscribers now, so a couple of months, 200 subscribers. Yeah, you know, I'm pretty happy with it. So as you do, chuck a, chuck us a like, hit us a comment, PM me, email me, jump on the website 4x4CampingAndAdventures.com. Uh, the review will be on there as well. So I have a written review on there as well about the vehicle. Um, and yeah, just as I said, keep watching, keep sharing, keep liking, and uh, I will see you in the next video. And as always, I might even see you on the traction trails. But uh, if not, I'll see you on the next video. See ya.